गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू लेक्चर नंबर एट ऑफ मॉड्यूल टू सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी एट फोल्ड पाथ गिवन बाई बुद्धास सो इफ यू रिमेंबर प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स वी टॉक्ट अबाउट स्टेब्लिश वैल्यूज एक्सप्रेस वैल्यूज देन वी सॉ relationship types with view 1 and with view 2 and in this lecture in fact onwards this lecture we are going to talk about various ways to ensure continuity of happiness to ensure harmonious relationship so one of those formulations given in traditions is eight fold path so in this session we will see how eight fold path helps us to ensure harmonious relationship with everyone so let's start this lecture so so far we have seen we studied continuity of happiness in fact the whole course is to ensure continuity of happiness that is our basic aspiration and for continuity of happiness now i suppose we must have understood that for continuity of happiness what is required number 1 right understanding in the self so understanding of the reality this understanding is required at the level of self so with right understanding we have resolution and with resolution we ensure continuity of happiness so number 1 right understanding is in the self is required then right feeling and right thought in the self is required then in the context of physical facility recognition of the need right utilization of the physical facility available physical facility with the feeling of prosperity is required so for the continuity of happiness these three things are required in me right understanding right thoughts and right feelings and feeling of prosperity so that we can assess our real requirement of physical facility we can have feeling more than required physical facility with ensuring all these three one can live with continuous happiness in tradition many ways to achieve this have been articulated there are many formulations available in traditions in our culture who help us to achieve the same thing so in this lecture and in next lecture we are going to study those formulations like we would study नोबेल एट फोल्ड पाथ देन वी वुड स्टडी यम नियम देन नेचुरल लॉज वेल्थ विशेष लिब्रेशन इज अनदर फॉर्मुलेशन सिमिलरली अनदर फॉर्मुलेशन इज नॉन एक्मुलेशन अफेक्शन नॉलेज सिंप्लिसिटी एंड फियरलेसनेस देर आर मैनी फॉर्मुलेशन डिस्कस्ड इन ट्रेडिशन टू अचीव ऑल दिस थ्री पॉइंट इन आर सेल्फ but in this course we are going to study a noble eightfold path yam niyam another formulation natural laws wealth wishes liberation and fourth formulation is this non accumulation affection knowledge and simplicity and fearlessness so these four formulations we are going to study in this course so let's start one by one so noble eightfold path so there are eight steps which we will study number 1 right view that is also known as samyak drishti so we will see in detail next is right resolve samyak sankalp right speech samyak vachan right action samyak karm right livelihood samyak ajivika right effort samyak परिश्रम राइट 
माइंडफुलनेस अवेयरनेस सम्यक ध्यान एंड लास्ट इज राइट विजन मेडिटेशन सम्यक समाधि सो वी विल स्टडी दीज एट स्टेप्स एंड वी विल सी हाउ दिस एट स्टेप्स हेल्प अस टू एंश्योर हारमोनी इन रिलेशनशिप्स सो लेट्स स्टार्ट फ्रॉम स्टेप नंबर वन दैट इज राइट व्यू ओके सो बिफोर एक्सेप्टिंग एनी थिंग एज आर गोल इट इज रिक्वायर टू इवेल्युएट इट प्रॉपरली सो इट इज इसेंशियल टू हैव द एबिलिटी टू रिकग्नाइज आर गोल so right means to see the reality as it is so in other words we can say our view has to be minimally right to make the right evaluation for recognizing our goal so if we realize the need to ensure the right understanding in the self right feeling in the self self then these become our goal so the more we progress towards understanding the more the ability to see the reality and the ability of evaluation gets better than before so it is a iterative process in other words we can say that our vision has to be at least clear enough to make the right evaluation for recognizing our goal so we should be competent enough we should be competent enough to recognize the things which lead to our happiness it means we should be able to recognize that which leads to our happiness as a source of happiness and which leads to unhappiness as a source of unhappiness it means right view means i have a view of reality that's make me enable to see the source of happiness source of continuous happiness today what is happening due to absence of this right view to the to the uh, because of absence of this understanding of reality we drive unhappiness unknowingly for example exploiting the others and assuming that it will lead to my happiness try to become prosperous through corruption cheating all these things are making us unhappy why because i don't have right view so right view means samyak drashti samyak means right drashti means refer to the point of view so right view is meant for seeing happiness as happiness and seeing unhappiness and unhappiness so the most important aspect of this philosophy is to understand the source of happiness and unhappiness so now with right view i can evaluate is this the right source of my happiness if i am able to find out right source of my happiness the source that ensure my continuity of happiness it means it is coming from right view so once it is identified we try to treat on the path despite all the precondition obstacles okay so you can investigate you can observe in yourself whether you have right view samyak drashti right view means a view that is unaffected from the environment that is unaffected from my preconditioning that is unaffected from my beliefs a view based on realization of coexistence a view based on my participation in larger order so if i have right view i can identify what is the right source of my happiness thus the sources of happiness and unhappiness are fundamental reality to be known 
as the this is known as the stepping stone of the stang mark so basically a stang mark help us to find out the real source of my happiness so with right view with samyak drishti i can identify real source of my happiness okay so for you you can take pause for 2 minutes and ask yourself do you have right view do you see outer world being unaffected from your preconditioning and beliefs are you able to find out real source of your happiness so this right view help us to find out the real source of happiness then next step is right resolve so right resolve means after correctly identifying our aspirations correctly identifying the source of real happiness we need to have the right resolve to take up essential activities with responsibilities in other words our external expression in living is first decided within so whatever we action we whatever we are our action are first it is decide, decided within myself so if we are unable to take up a resolution to pursue our basic aspirations and make wrong decisions we deviate from the path for a longer period so that's why a right resolve is required in myself so once i have right view then there is a right resolve at the level of my feeling at the level of my thoughts okay so if our decision is correct it means they are aligned with harmony they are aligned with reality then our external expression becomes right mutually fulfilling and if it decision are incorrect it means at the level of thought we were not resolved rightly that's why our decisions are incorrect and it will create chaos outside also so at the root of our behavior work livelihood are our decisions within in so what whatever decision we takes at the level of thought are actually expressed during interaction and work with rest of nature so with right view i get right resolve i get resolution in myself so if we have taken the right decision for harmony aligned to the reality then our external expression is right and mutually fulfilling so right resolves refers to all those decisions which we intend to express or execute in a mutually fulfilling relationship and this can happen with right view so step 1 was regarding right view once i have right view then i am resolved rightly in my imagination so right resolve refers to all those decision which we intend to express or execute in mutual relationship let's see another step right speech so to be able to say that the right things in right manner so once i have right view once i have resolve in myself then i am able to see right things in right manner it means i am telling the things as it is i am expressing the things as i have seen in myself so right speech is most significant part of of our behavior so it is necessary so that we can speak the truth and the way we are speaking the truth is also right so right speech is related to our expression right speech is related to our our body language when we tell anything so two things are required number 
to speak the truth as i have seen in myself and number 2 that process of telling is also right even today we can see that absence of right speech absence of this right speech ensure all these things it means untruthfulness harsh language criticism gossip fruitless conversation all are creating an unhappiness situation around us thus for our behavior to be right it is essential that our speech is right and our expression are appealing so the most significant part of the behavior is right speech so with number 1 right view right resolve and now right speech so i am speaking that truth which i have seen in myself with right understanding and now now i am articulating the things with right resolve so it is right speech so i am telling the truth as it is and also the expression also the process of telling is harmonious for everyone okay now let's see another step is right action samyak karma karmant so the fourth step along with right vision right speech right resolve is right action so right action means right action is meant for the proper organization of mental action action through body behavior intake routine all the actions in any dimensions we are taking is actually properly organized is coming from my resolve is coming from my right view so all these are named as karma so so karmant means the final part of an action and it determines the expression of our behavior so this is karmant karmant is highlighting the point that the rest of the action is over before the expression of behavior we make decision in thoughts known as mental action mental action is the root cause of physical action so karmant is highlighting the point that the rest of action is over and now physical action is going to take place this is karmant last action and before this every action has already taken place at the level of thought at the level of understanding that's why we are naming it as karmant right action okay so let's move towards next step step number 5 5 right livelihood samyak ajivika so the fourth step is fifth step is samyak ajivika ajivika right livelihood and it is very important part this fifth part of ashtang mark is related to right livelihood so along with the behavior our production process also needs to be corrected it means while producing the things a cyclicity a mutual fulfillment mutual enrichment is required to ensure so the manner in which we fulfill our physical needs and the manner in which we fulfill the physical needs of our family also have to be right so at the level of self at the level of body and now at the level of interaction with nature it also be harmonious so the methods which we are identifying at the as the source of income to fulfill the needs of the family must be with the right means in right direction so what are the basic guidelines for right livelihood it should be human friendly or at least not exploiting human beings 
who are involved in this production process, who are involved in this livelihood process. Then eco-friendly. Eco-friendly means ensuring mutual fulfillment with rest of nature. So, whenever we are interacting with other orders in nature, material order, pranic order, animal orders, they should not be exploited during this livelihood process. So, basic guideline is it should be human friendly, it should be eco friendly. So, rest of nature and human at least should not be exploited do and while ensuring our livelihood. Therefore, it is essential to have the right mindset free from ego while sharing, giving charity, etc. So, basic guidelines for right livelihood is human friendly in which there will not be exploitation of human beings and another is eco friendly in which there will not be exploitation of nature. So, in the absence of right livelihood, there is exploitation, harm to others, selling drugs, selling weapons, etc. You can see present, present situation is chaotic because of absence of this right livelihood and it is because of absence of right view, because of absence of right resolve, because of absence of right behavior. So, if we ensure this right livelihood, we ensure harmonious relationship relations with the rest of nature. Let us see another step that is right effort. It means making effort for harmony, to make effort for understanding harmony, learning skills for living in harmony and living in harmony. So, to purify one sanskar which are not in harmony is right effort. It means I am making effort to purify my sanskars because ultimately my sanskars are going to govern my actions. So, I have to make effort on my sanskars. I have to purify on my sanskars. So, when we decide to get our livelihood through the right means, our sanskars and our sanskar is not aligned, then there is a gap between living and saying. For that, we need to put the effort from both ends. One is to learn the right skills and right livelihood. The other is to correct or get rid of sanskars, which are opposite to our right living. So, there is a need to cleansing, there is need to purify our sanskars, which are not in harmony. And for that, we have to make effort on myself. Okay. So, pri for primarily, primarily for a healthy self to nurture existing good qualities and acquiring new good qualities to pure oneself of existing bad qualities and not acquiring new bad qualities. So, we have to save ourselves self not acquiring new bad qualities and parallelly we have to work to purify our sanskars. Similarly, we have to make effort to nurture things and similarly we have to save ourselves to ensure harmony with nature. Okay. So, let us see next step is right mindfulness. So, the next step is right mindfulness. It means continuous awareness. So, awareness does not mean to remember the things which are in memory. Awareness means being constantly observant to oneself, being conscious to activity of the self. So, continuous awareness about oneself, about the activity of self. Now, next question is very important. If we have understood all these things, have we achieved all or there is something to be achieved 
or is there something more to achieve so ultimately we want to understand to see everything as it is with clarity without any confusion without any contradiction without any distortion whatever steps we have discussed so far are not the final achievement they are just the steps the goal or final achievement is realization knowledge wisdom these are our final goals so ultimately we want to understand to see everything with clarity and our final goal is the realization and knowledge with this we can discuss the last step of this eightfold path that is right vision meditation so the achievement of first seven steps of this ashtang mark is to ensure the right behavior right speech right livelihood in one's life by doing so we participate in the smooth running of the societal systems and we can say at least don't get indulged in any kind of bad practice so by and large we become responsible self restrained self organized and expected participation in society is also fulfilled with these achievement working in the self for knowledge and understanding is the way to samadhi means right vision right meditation so the final stage of samadhi is meditation is realization so while working on the eight step we see the more we focus within the more our vision gets clarity and at the level of wisdom increasingly manifests so with the clarity of the vision we can ensure the first seven steps with more accuracy and preciseness this also help us to identify our goals to the point and realize them in totality so with the help of these seven steps we are able to see the things in totality thus these eight steps are connected with a cyclic process and complementarity with everyone so right vision means achievement realization knowledge samadhi is the ultimate state of awareness in which we can see the reality as it is continuously so in this state the self is purified and focused this is our goal so all these steps have been briefly identified as no, noble eightfold path they are identified as wisdom knowledge okay so now we can sum up the whole lecture we have understood right view right resolve means right decision right view means able to recognize which leads to happiness which leads to unhappiness then right speech right action right livelihood right effort right mindfulness and right vision means self study self exploration to see the reality as it is so if we investigate if we follow this eight steps in myself so i get self organized in myself and also my actions ensure harmony with other human being and rest of nature so this is one formulation in our tradition which tell us how to ensure harmony within myself and how to ensure harmony how to ensure harmonious relation with rest of nature so that's all from my side for this lecture in next lecture we will study another formulation given in tradition to ensure harmonious relationship with everyone thank you friends let's meet in next lecture have a good day thank you